Hey everybody, it's Dave, Blue Jacket 66 here for a video. I think it's been about a week, a little over a week, so I thought I would let you know uh, what's going on. My last video was kind of just a, a little startle video about the price accelerations, card values, and just some of the cards that I'd bought just within the last few months and how much they've gone up. And we talked about how we all have cards and they've all kind of gone up, and especially, you know, cards that I've had for decades are just astronomical uh, now it's 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 really funny people coming out of the woodwork but in my opinion it's 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 a great time to be uh, collecting it's a great time to be a sports card enthusiast or collector or investor or flipper or whatever it's so fun uh, things are going up and most importantly people talking about it and are excited about it and if people are excited and talking about our hobby that's that's a a good thing. There's you know articles in Forbes and things on CNN and it's all over YouTube and uh, people get a little bit sour grapes I think about uh, prices are too high and they wish this buzz bubble would break because we can't afford things. Well there's many many cards that all of us can't afford and um, I've missed out on cards that I will never have because of price accelerations and that's the way it is but I can't imagine people uh, hoping that the enthusiasm and the interest and the uh, all the happiness and and about the hobby would simmer down so that you can afford cards um, i 'm redirecting some of my purchasing uh, and probably stunting some of my purchasing but redirecting some of my purchasing because uh, our prices are high and I'm locked out on a lot of stuff just like you but to be honest with you I don't want it to end I want I want this enthusiasm and this roller coaster to keep climbing up that hill it's fun it, it, it it's the national is going to be fun there's excitement in it why would I want prices to become depressed and people to leave the hobby that doesn't make any sense to me it's a great great time to be in sports card and non-sports cards and comics uh, i bought a pretty nice comic uh, purchase just the other day that i'll hopefully get in in a couple weeks i'll show you but i guess i wanted to show you what i have been buying i told you that i was going to probably direct a little bit toward non-sports stuff and i have done that i'll show you some of that um I already had the, as far as Marvel, the 1991 Marvel Complete Set. It's a pretty beautiful set. It's, it's been on my shelf for, oh, I don't know, 18 years or so. Along with that. Uh, The series one, the 1990 set. This is the Stanley. I kind of have it a little separate because this card is gem minty looking and it makes it pretty valuable. Uh, but this is just a fantastic set of all the Marvel superheroes with uh, uh, the big ones, of course, always being uh, Spider-Man and, and uh, Black Panther, Iron Man, etc. Super set, super set. So I have both uh, series one, series two, and looking forward to uh, series three. I had uh, several years ago um, this 1967 uh, superheroes uh, sticker set of Marvel stickers from 1967. I'd won that in auction, and this you don't see these very often. At least I don't. And this is just in fantastic uh, condition. The centering of these are just terrible, and I don't think there's anything you can do about uh, that. But uh, 1967 Marvel stickers, complete set of 55. I'd gotten that kind of as an afterthought in a heritage auction, I think. I think it was heritage auction five, six, seven years ago. And uh, I can't imagine, this is probably pretty valuable. Now, I, th I can't remember how much I paid at the time. I, th I think maybe $700, but I can imagine what that's worth now. Along that same vein, I went ahead and I have picked up a sealed unopened box of the 1994 Flare. 
the inaugural edition of Marvel Universe, 1961 through 1993. So sealed from 1994. This is the first box of that. That's ultra cool. Um, kind of along those same lines. Went ahead and got a sealed box of the 2000 Dragon Ball Z Series 1. I think this is our first offering of, of Dragon Ball Z. So I think I have a pretty good wax collection, actually, both non-sport and vintage sport. Not so much modern sport. Well, actually, I have a lot of modern sport, too, but... Uh, I just kind of, I'm not sure why I have that. I don't enjoy it as much, but it's its in bins. Um, I did pick up this. 1990 Fleer Basketball. Sealed wax box. It's BBC authenticated from a sealed case. So kind of moving away from some singles, buying some wax, buying some uh, non-sport. I think in my last video, or one of the last, I showed... Uh, my uh, Rocky set from Rocky Two. They didn't make a Rocky One. It's a nice, uh, complete set. Really enjoy that. So, being that we're into Rocky recently, I went ahead and uh, picked up a, a an open. Actually, it's not open, but it's a box of. Uh, Rocky two cards, there's 36 packs. And for some reason, went and hadn't got uh, five boxes of the complete set. And if you get a, a on-card Sylvester Stallone autograph, those are very pricey. So this is from, uh, yeah. So that's really nice. Got a bunch of boxes of those just to put away, for Caden to put away. Mm, what else? So kind of moving away from buying some singles, just buying some wax. I'm really into the uh, non-sport. I, uh, I think Leland's has an auction coming up. I think it's it's running now. I think it finishes in two or three weeks, but there's some non-sport in there I'm, I'm wanting. There's a Munster's complete set. There's a nice Brady Bunch set. I've always wanted a Brady Bunch set. Probably a couple of my all-time favorite and, and sets that I'm most proud of, actually, in my 1965 Gilligan's Island complete set and my 65 Lost in Space set. I don't think I've ever showed the Gilligan's Island, but that was a Christmas present in 1980 under the tree from my dad. Um, so as far as sports stuff, um, happened to be at uh, Antique Mall today and picked up, these are all $2 a piece. These are all Jordans. If these would grade out fine, and I think these would grade out nines, these two, there could be some value there but I thought it was a pretty good deal this dealer had this case and I had them come open and he had lots and lots of 800 count boxes just full of of cards basketball cards baseball you know hockey all that they had some cheap junk wax packs too but they really didn't let me give me more than five minutes to look through so I just looked through the basketball and uh grabbed these all for two bucks a piece they're all in fantastic condition. I never scored a antique mall, but uh, I kind of did there. There's a nice hoops. Um, David Robinson rookie, which in itself is not an expensive card, but it's, it's strange. I mean, it, this looks pretty minty to me, but if this would grade out a nine or 10, I'm going to make some money on it, but who knows and where and when or why I'll be grading. I know this PSA thing is everybody up in arms about the, uh, the prices are, I'll admit, uh, extreme. I'm too impatient to submit to a grading company and get something back in six months. I had a, that happened to me with PSA with a, uh, they graded a wax pack for me 
and it took eight months to get back, and I, I, can't, I can't do that. So I only submit to grading companies a couple times a year anyway. I'm very partial to PSA and SGC. I have zero interest in any of the other companies, including the new one. Uh, uh, with the, What is it, HGA? Um, I have no interest in that until they prove to me. They have to prove it. Uh, I'm not a believer. They can th use the word AI. They can. I, I'm not. I don't buy it. I don't believe it. And they can have their flashy holders. And I wish them the best of luck because I think competition is fantastic. But uh, I am not uh, uh, going to be a guinea pig with that. To be honest with you. So I don't know what I'll do. My high grade cards or my valuable cards. I'll just be s sending to PSA. Uh, and paying the price, but I, I really don't have much to send right now. Um, I do have a lot of those 70s basketballs and some Jordans that uh, I picked up recently that could go and probably go under that Express for sure, but uh, I'm in no hurry to do that right now. As far as PSA raising their prices, uh, that they're going to make more money. I think it will cut down on some of the some of the submissions, but I don't honestly think it's going to cut down on a significant amount of uh, the submissions. But uh, you know, if people want to pay that price and are willing to pay that price, uh, the money flows to them, and, and good for them. I'm very partial to uh, PSA and SGC. Those are the only ones I'm really going to use, and I love SGC, and I have some of my very very high dollar, most coveted pre-war vintage cards in SGC, and I want them in SGC for sure. My loan pickup since my last video of a single, actually it's not, I, ha I have uh, some of those Topson cards, 1995 Topson, I'm putting together that set, got a few of those in, I actually added one or two more to my uh, 1967 uh, die cut wacky packages, I am down to needing like six to complete that set, and it's been very painful. Uh, the last six, I don't, they're not showing up very often. Actually, they're not showing up at all, because when they do show up, if they're in good condition, I'm, I'm paying for them, because I want to complete that set. Uh, but I've gotten some of those singles. But the big single I got is this beauty. It's 1956 Topps Willie Mays Grayback and a PSA 8 that is, I gotta say it, it's, it's perfectly centered. It's not kinda perfectly centered, it looks perfectly centered to me. It's pretty much flawless card and the best looking 56 maze I've ever seen. Um, so I probably paid a world record price for it, but if, if you want the card, sometimes that has to happen. I don't have many cards, nor do you probably, that have actually gone down in value since you bought them, and I've been collecting since the mid-70s. So despite my paying way up for this card, uh, I anticipate that it will be way, 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 way up in the future. I think all Amaze issues have nowhere to go but up, and 1956 is such such a popular issue. So now I have the really high grade uh, maze mantle and Clemente in the 56. I can't remember if I have an Aaron. I know that sounds weird, but I can't remember uh, if I do or not. But so this beauty uh, will be kind of adored here at house for a while. And I'm going to have to put this in the safety deposit box because this is. Uh, this is something else. So there it is, the 1956 Tops Willie Mays and a PSA 8. So here's where Blue Jacket 66 is going. Sports cards, a little bit of wax, love the Pokemon. I'm still doing a lot of Pokemon with Caden and enjoying it a lot. The non-sport, uh, it really, love the non-sport especially you know all these shows that i watched growing up uh in the late 60s and early 70s 
you know, they made wax of that and it's just, it's not very expensive and it's super fun. Uh, I think the value is going to go up on it. I kind of lucked out and having a lot of Star Wars before the run up. Um, so I just love non-sport stuff uh, as well. Uh, this Dragon Ball Z, which is, uh, I think, pretty cool. Um, is not my cup of tea, but I actually just bought that for Caden because we we have a big you know storage bin that we kind of do in a put away for him. I don't buy stuff and say you know I buy stuff for him and he can open it, but there's some stuff that we're buying that I think we both agreed on. Hey, we're going to put this away, and when your daddy's age or whenever you can open it or sell it or but you can have your whole life to look at it because it's. Collecting does not have to be a single card. It can be a, a single card or a partial set or a full set or just unopened wax or just a few packs. It's, 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 it's all good. Collecting is so fun, and I just hope that uh, uh, everybody remains positive about uh, the direction of the hobby uh, and that all of them are involved in the hobby to stay positive about all the different characters, the the dealers, the collectors, the flippers, the investors, the guys that are out there just to kind of put themselves out there above the product. It's all good. I mean, I can't imagine not wanting this hobby to thrive and to have such a strong spotlight on it. I mean, sports card collecting and, and collecting cards in general is in the limelight. And I think that we should cheer that and not uh, begrudge the fact that some of the things we want, the prices are out of, out of reach. Prices are out of reach for a lot of stuff that I want. There's some cards that I've been putting off buying that it's very likely I will never have, and I don't feel bad about that. I had my, cho I had my chance to have these cards over the last year, 10 years, or whatever, and I likely will never have them. And that's fine because there's so much goodness out there. There's so much more out there, and you just find your niche, and you have fun with it, and uh, uh, encourage and cheer on your fellow collectors. Talk to you later. Have a great rest of the week.